recording. Made. So what's up everybody? This is Peter coming to you with another C++ uh, Made Easy tutorial. And in this tutorial, we are going to be learning about the inline keyword. So for those of you, uh, <laughs> sorry, kind of sick. So for those of you who are interested, uh, who have read ahead and um, or have heard about this keyword, this is probably the most irrelevant keyword in all of C++. The reason why I'm teaching it is because I'm trying to teach you the ins and out of it and you might see some older code or some people actually use the inline keyword and instead of you being confused like I want I want you guys to actually understand what it does even though you don't really need to utilize it in your code so basically the way the inline keyword is more of an optimization technique and um, I just have to explain something to you quickly. So let's just create a function and um, we'll, uh, we'll say test function. So right now uh, with the way compilers and IDEs are, uh, this would, because uh, what they do to optimize it is that if you're, if you have a little bit of code in your methods or functions, what it does is that it changes it to inline. It changes it to inline automatically for you. And once it reaches a certain a certain length, then it doesn't make it inline anymore. So what's the difference between inline and non-inline? So basically, when we make a call uh, to function, what normally happens is that it says, "Okay, we're making a call to function." So um, what it does is it says, "Okay, now we got to go up to the program, execute function, then go back down." And so if you're talking about speed and optimization, that is a bit slower than actually running it in a sequential manner. And that's what the inline keyword does. So what inline does uh, is sort of an example of what it does. It basically copies what's inside here and it replaces this function and pastes it in here. So it acts as though the function name isn't there. So instead of having to go all the way back up to search through the function, then starting on the, ne the next line, it just basically p copies and pastes it in there. And therefore, your code is much more optimized. But now with newer compilers, depending on the length of it, um, the length of your function, the shorter your function is, it will uh, make it in line and the longer your function is it will most likely make it in line now another thing a lot of you might be saying okay well if I have a super long function I will just put in line in the front of the function and it just copied in and all my functions will be optimized and yada 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 well think again it doesn't work like that the way uh, compilers and stuff work nowadays when you use the inline keyword it's just a suggestion. It says, "Hey, hey, you compiler, uh, I want, uh, I want this function to be inline. So it's up to you whether you want it to be inline or not. It's just a suggestion whether you should it should be inline or not. But your compiler does it for you, and you don't have to worry about it. Now, the one thing to note about the inline keyword is that you have to define what." It goes in it on declaration so just like templates and stuff you have to declare what's inside it on declaration it's the same thing uh, within the class so we made an inline function in the class we would have to describe what's inside this function inside the header file instead of inside the CPP file or you'll get a unresolved uh, symbol error error I think it is um, but yeah, that's how you would use it inside of a class structure. So then again, you will probably never have to use the inline keyword. I can't think of a scenario when you would. Uh, but just to let you know what its use is, and if you ever see it in the future, that's what it basically is. So it's basically just copying what's inside here. It's, it makes a suggestion to the compiler, and if the compiler agrees, it will copy what's inside here, and every single time it sees a keyword with the same a uh, function name with the same name it will copy it will replace that and put this in there for for faster faster code but that's it for, it for this tutorial uh, I hope you enjoyed this thanks for watching don't forget to comment rate and subscribe and the next video will be coming out within the next three hours so bye for now